Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Dojo Live Recap Show. That can only mean one thing. It's Monday again. Today is Monday, November 22nd, 2021. This is Tulio Siragusa broadcasting from Southern California. Joining me are Carlos Ponte in Cuernavaca, Mexico, and Kim Lantis in Hermosillo, Mexico. Hey, guys. Welcome back. Hey, Hey, Tulio. It's good to be here. We had three shows last week. Uh, let's uh, see if we can recap them inside of 10 minutes. Uh, the first show we had was Troubleshoot Faster, Why Machine Learning is a Game Changer for Root Cause Analysis Using Logs. That was with uh, Gavin Cohen and AJ Singh, VP of Product and Founder and CEO, respectively, at Zebrium. And then we spoke with uh, Jeremy Almond, who's the co-founder and CEO at Paystand, about how payments as a service and blockchain are changing, blockchain, excuse me, are changing B2B payments. And finally, we had a discussion with Rohin Parkar, who's the co-founder and CEO at Spintly, about wireless mesh, the future of building automation. Very interesting conversation, all three uh, disrupting industries, making things easier and faster, more accessible. Anything, uh, any one of these stood out the most for you guys? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, in my case, the one with uh, with uh, Jeremy Almond, the one uh, at Paystand, I think it's um, uh, the way that businesses are like, not, I'm not going to say shifting because it's really not a big shift, but it's kind of evolving, let's call it. Uh, in the way that the, the 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 blockchain element is in the it's is affecting or having an effect better set on how companies conduct transactions uh, so it i think it's fascinating so um i i don't know i don't know about you guys but this conversation was definitely uh, an eye-opener for me personally. I didn't even know it. That I, I actually it was educational for me. There were, there, were, there were a lot of things that I didn't know of how what the options were for companies to uh, conduct these transactions. And also things like, for example, when I asked about, about factoring and how that was made possible by these technologies, I just found it fascinating and, uh, and eye-opening and enlightening for me. Well, I think it, the way I understood it is exactly what you're saying. There actually aren't, strangely enough, a, a lot of options for businesses, <laughs> business-to-business payments. And I, and I think that's what Paystand's all about, is allowing mm-hmm. what's so easy at the B2C or the client payment level, why can't that translate to the business level, right? Um, which would just be so much more convenient. And I think the way I understood it is a lot of it has to do with just risk and risk management and when you're handling such large, potentially large quantities of money. But I think it's really great that companies like Paystand are helping businesses get to where they really should be. I guess, technically speaking, there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to make such transactions as simply as you and I can with a a credit card. Yeah, it was very interesting. When we charge a, a restaurant bill, the restaurant is basically fronted credit from the bank and they pay a 3%, 4% interest on that credit until the funds clear. Whereas with businesses who are doing hundreds of thousands of dollars of transactions, sometimes millions of dollars of transaction, that just wouldn't work. Imagine having a front end that kind of percentage it would eat away in the company's margin. So you don't have the same options. So they're basically creating the same impact that a Venmo has, for example, for us consumers to for businesses, which is very, very uh, disruptive and, and can move things pretty quickly for businesses trying to grow in a timely fashion. So congratulations to them. If you didn't sit, yeah. check out the show, just go on dojo.live. That's the URL. You can find that show and 400 other shows. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what else uh, stood out? I, I liked our conversation with uh, Rohan Parkar as well. It goes to show how uh, technology is advancing and the form factor is getting smaller and smaller and wireless connectivity is getting more and more powerful, which allows, uh, for example, with the latest generation of Bluetooth technology, this idea of wireless mesh, where you can create a beehive type of uh, setup 
Uh, and in, in, in their particular case, when it comes to access for doors, uh, currently you have to hardwire these things. You have to run everything to a big closet. It's very uh, construction intensive where they've created a, a platform that allows you to do that wirelessly. Mm -hmm. And so the cost of uh, entry is a lot cheaper and also the cost of maintenance and the, the ability to get smaller businesses have access to what is typically reserved for big companies who have big pockets is, uh, is very powerful in terms of securing your, off your physical office space. Yeah, I like the ecological impacts as well. Um, as we shift toward wireless when it means less materials and less cables and like you were saying, maintenance and everything else, I think there's a lot of potential. It's, it's really fun to sort of be on this, this hybrid, right? This one foot on one side where we still have to have, you know, the, the physical space, but we have this other foot on the wireless and just, it's like everything. It's a really interesting time to, to be alive. <laughs> You know, it's amazing. We we take for granted access to internet and telephone service because everything was wired into our home in the Western world. But there are parts of the world where 60%, 70% of the population didn't have access, didn't even have a phone line because the infrastructure wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So wireless has made it possible for everyone to have access. And so this is an extension of that in terms of what was typically reserved for only select group of companies. Now, any company can secure their building by having these kinds of technology available to them. Let's talk about uh, Zebrium a little bit as we're coming up on time. Anything stood out for you guys in our conversation with Gavin Cohen and AJ Singh about the Zebrium? That, that was a, a very, uh, how can I say this? That was a very high level technical type of interview <laughs> that, it to, in, in all honesty, that it like it escapes my understanding and working knowledge of these technologies. But I this is what I mean, we say. Take it away, to Leo. <laughs> basically, I'll hand it over to. Well, what are you? This way, Tulio, I'll hand it over to you. You, you, the man for this. I bestow upon thee the right to oh, lead that particular God. part of the conversation. So take it away. I'm not an engineer either. I just but I you're guess the I read expert. More. You've been like in tech since you were born. So, hey, exactly, exactly. Okay. I can fake it better, I suppose. Yeah, you can fake it better. I can. Well, no, I mean, look, what I liked about it is if you're a software engineer and you're building products and inevitably things break and then you have to do a root cause analysis to figure out what broke, why did it break, and that process takes time. And Sometimes if you're working with mission critical application, whether it's banking or even government applications, it takes too long. And there's penalties for not fixing things within a time frame. Some companies require uh, SLA. So it's very manual intensive and uh, not a very efficient way to resolve a problem, RCA root, call and root cause analysis. And you've got all these logs and you've, you're relying on people to read them and figure out patterns, what happened the last time, why did this happen this time. So they've, they've introduced machine learning that does this automatically and can troubleshoot or help find the root cause of a problem a lot faster to the point where they can isolate a potential problem before it even starts. And that's ultimately what we're trying to get to is, you know, if it, Problems, resolving something after it's broken, it's one thing, but resolving it before it even breaks, that's that's ultimately what we're trying to get to. And so their their technology allows that uh, that capability. So anyone who's managing like DevOps today or Network Operation Center or running that function in their organization needs tools like this to be more efficient and to be faster. Uh, to, check to out Zebrium and also check out this week's shows. Ah, we got 30 seconds. Go, Carlos. Oh, yeah. That's it. What do we got? <laughs> two things. Two things. Two shows. Uh, no, two shows only. We have only have two shows. Okay. Electronic music tomorrow and the food system on Wednesday. <laughs> That's all we have. Everything else, check it out on the website. <laughs> Electronic music. Thanks, guys. See you guys tomorrow, 12 o'clock. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>